ora a facoltà di intervenire a nome della commissione il commissario Sinchevicius prego a facoltà di replica President, onorable members, I've listened very carefully to your interventions today and I would like to thank everybody for engaging in this important debate this morning. And I'm glad we are having this broad public debate on such an important topic. Nature deserves this public attention. So what can we take away from today's debate? First, I think it has illustrated very well what's at stake. It has shown that stakes are high and that nature will not allow us to lose time. Far too much of Europe's nature has now been degraded or destroyed. And it's vital to reverse that trend and time is running out. And the world is watching us. So do our children. And we all need to take responsibilities. If we want to deliver on Europe's global biodiversity commitments agreed at COP15 in Montreal, in December 2022, if we want to maintain the role of the EU as a global climate leader, we have to deliver. Nature restoration is not a luxury legislation. Healthy ecosystems, they are just fundamental assets of our economy and society. And we cannot simply opt out or postpone. And today I hear again uh, that the Green Deal is not the nature restoration law? Honorable members, yes, it is. This law is the flagship initiative of the European Green Deal. Nature and biodiversity is a key pillar and the equivalent of the climate law for nature. And it is the first dedicated EU legal proposal on nature since 30 years. You may be surprised to hear this, but to me this debate has shown that an agreement is possible if we remain engaged and if we take our responsibilities. Why well, I'm rather optimistic. Because most of your interventions have shown that there is a willingness to discuss this law. And because even those of you who claim that this law has to be rejected have proposed amendments. This is positive and this is what the co-legislators co and co-decision process is all about. And if there is anything to change or improve, commission here is to discuss and support you. This is our role to facilitate an agreement. And this is what we are determined to do. And I'm optimistic because today I have heard concerns on issues which have already been addressed and solved on council side and which we have already reflected in the non-paper on the 8th of June. And in spite of our genuine efforts to clarify and explain, I still hear and read many misconceptions and misunderstandings. I still hear questions to which there are very straightforward answers, uh, which we have already provided to many of you on bilateral basis, but which are more than happy to reiterate. So let me mention just a few of them. Ms. Sander and Mr. Mato, you raised concern that nature restoration will impact food security and that we are going to increase food imports. Well, the EU food system has achieved a high level of security and a wide offer for consumers. And actually 20% of food in the EU goes to waste. The challenge is to maintain the EU agricultural food production potential to ensure food security in the mid to long term. And this requires transition to sustainable food production and sustainable food system. I'm afraid that not a food availability is the issue, but food affordability. The biggest threat to food security in the EU and globally are the combined interlinked climate and biodiversity crisis, le leading to depletion of soil, pollinators loss, desertification and drought. And this reflected in the very comprehensive study on the drivers of food security, which commission published in January. So I heard Ms. Snyder ask for data and impact assessment. All data on relation between healthy ecosystem and food security can be found there. And on food security, I make a plea to all of you who have expressed concern to actually look at Article 9 of the proposal and see with your own eyes what this article is about. Requirements are about increasing trends in indicators. 
which scientists tell us are the best proxies to tell us the health of our agriculture. And member states can set their own levels to be achieved on those indicators. So when we talk about regional dimension, member states' flexibilities, they are there. Mr. Wondra and Mr. Dorfman, also Mr. Torvalds, you expressed concern that the proposal would put member states into a straitjacket. The opposite is true. It provides for a large degree of flexibility and subsidiarity. It will be for member states to decide which restoration measures they wish to put in place, where and when. And the proposal asks member states to do this together with stakeholders, involving them closely, all of them. And that means farmers, foresters, fishers, civil society, scientists. Ms. Zalewska, let me also reassure, reassure you that the Commission will only assess member states' plans to see the EU trends, but it will not approve or validate them. Mr. Lise, you and some other member states have expressed concern that the nature restoration law would hamper hydropower from dam removals in rivers. Nowhere does the nature restoration law proposal require the establishment of hydropower. To the contrary, it says literally, Article 7.2, member states shall primarily address obsolete barriers which are those that are no longer needed for renewable energy generation or other uses. So we would, so we would expect member states to target primary obsolete barriers. Experts estimated that at least 20% of all barriers in the EU are obsolete. So they no longer serve any purpose. The number of hydropower plants in the EU is estimated to be 23,000, which represents barely 2% in the total number of barriers. It's therefore be possible easily to respect the proposed requirements without having impact on hydroelectricity generation. And Mr. Lise, you said we need to make compromises to reconcile nature protection and economic activities or infrastructure. And you said you believe in cooperation. I'm glad to hear this because I hope you are ready to finalize this co-decision procedure in the same constructive spirit as we have started one year ago. Or I would say four years ago when the first time I've met you and we had a discussion on this upcoming mandate. And finally, let me also use this opportunity to clarify once for all uh, that the nature restoration law will not put 10% land out of production. First of all, the 10% is not a mandatory target, neither for individual member states, especially not for a farm level. Hence, there is no obligation for individual farmers to take 10% of their land out of production. It is mentioned as benchmark referring to the EU level objective set in the EU biodiversity strategy for 2030. Member states are asked to increase the share of agriculture land with high diversity landscape features at national level until a satisfactory level is reached. Member states would define themselves in their national restoration plans the satisfactory level they aim to achieve. And that level could be way below 10%. And as stressed in the non-paper, the Commission is ready to clarify objective of this provision and adapt if it's necessary. Dear colleagues, last but not least, I remain optimistic because I know that since the beginning of this mandate, we have always worked constructively. We have always shown that we can find compromises and solutions. We carve them out in the most difficult legislations and we have already reached agreements on many important files sometimes very difficult files, and it would be regretful and difficult to explain why we didn't manage to do so also for one of the most important pieces of the legislation of the European Green Deal. Honorable members, let me be very clear and honest. A compromise is possible and in reach. The, diverg the divergences are not as big as to justify rejection. Other files have been even more complicated, and we managed it. I sincerely hope we will not miss this opportunity to bring nature restoration law to a successful conclusion. The Commission will play its role as honest broker and do everything it can make to make it happen. Honorable members, some of you voiced concerns that this law may hamper our economies, putting farmers, foresters, fishers out of work. Let me be clear, there will be no work. 
no income when nature is sick. Today, we are proposing the medicine. The first to benefit from this medicine will be the, those whose livelihoods directly depend on our natural resources. They need nature to be healthy. They need that for the resilience and productivity of the land, of the seas, they need it to ensure food security. Some of you said that they are in favor of nature restoration, but they simply asked for a new proposal from the Commission. Let me be very clear. We do have a proposal, a proposal based on solid impact assessment, a proposal that has already evolved on which we have presented a non-paper in June and on which member states have already presented many amendments touching upon many issues also raised in this House. A proposal on which until April all groups work constructively, proposed important amendments. A proposal on which even those groups who plead for rejection have now tabled amendments for the plenary vote tomorrow. Honour members, this is called co-decision. Let's finalize this process. It is possible, and with a constructive approach, we could conclude it actually quite quickly. Let's not miss this opportunity. We cannot lose time, and we don't need to lose time. Restoration is our best hope of getting nature back in shape. We need that for climate mitigation. We need that for climate adaptation. We need that for our economy. The world is watching us. Our citizens are watching we set the pace at COP15 in Montreal, and this is our chance to deliver at home, proving to the world that it can be done, proving to our citizens that we keep our promises. Last time, honorable members, let's secure a better future for our citizens, our farmers, our fishers, our businesses, our children. Thank you. Grazie a lei. E ora ha facoltà di replicare il relatore, l'onorevole Luena, prego. Muy bien, Presidenta, gracias. Solo unas eh, palabras ya para terminar. Eh, agradecerle a todos los intervinientes. Creo que ha habido bastantes compañeras y compañeros aquí que han defendido bastante bien la ley de restauración. Y el primero de ellos, el comisario, le quiero agradecer personalmente porque la comisión ha estado ahí detrás y ha estado el comisario de Medio Ambiente y eso creo que es importante. Por cierto, porque si no, claro, empiezan a decirse mentiras y al final se quedan. La Comisión de Pesca y de Agricultura sí que rechazaron el texto, la Comisión de Medio Ambiente no. Y en parte, al buen trabajo, hay unas trabajadoras ahí del secretario de ENVI que han dirigido muy bien los trabajos y ahora, claro, no podríamos aquí decir cosas que no son. Pero bueno, en estos minutos, vamos a ver, le escucho a muchos diputados del PP y diputadas que han hablado aquí que no les gusta la ley. Bueno, pues estamos en un Parlamento. Claro, vamos a hacer enmiendas, vamos a corregirla. Lo que no se puede hacer es bloquear, porque eso es una actitud antisistema, directamente. No, no, directamente. Ahora, si quiere, me pide una tarjeta azul, señor Rangel. No, no, si quiere, me pide una tarjeta azul. Por tanto, abandonen la negación y vayan a la negociación. Es lo que tienen que hacer. Miren, miren, estas manos y de los otros grupos tendidas, vuelvan al Pacto Verde Europeo. Vuelvan. Y desde luego yo les digo que cuando aprobemos mañana esta ley, en los trílogos, contarán también con mi diálogo y con la participación de este grupo. No, eso son excusas. Porque finalmente, ¿qué vamos a votar? Les digo lo que vamos a votar. Vamos a votar la posición del Consejo, le recuerdo los países donde gobierna el PP, Bulgaria, República Checa, Croacia, Grecia, Irlanda, Rumanía y Lituania. Y las enmiendas fruto de compromisos donde participó el PP. Eso es lo que vamos a votar mañana. Por tanto, esta es una ley para la naturaleza, no es una ley contra nadie ni contra nada. Hay que darle una oportunidad. Sobre todo porque el sitio de este Parlamento hay que defenderlo y también el sitio de Europa en el mundo. Así que la verdad que soy optimista y espero, espero a buena parte de diputados conservadores que puedan sumarse a apoyar esta ley de restauración de la naturaleza. Gracias. Gracias, gracias, relator. La discussione è chiusa, io ringrazio tutte le colleghe e colleghi che hanno partecipato ad una discussione così ricca, come merita un tema così cruciale per il presente e il futuro. Come sapete la votazione si svolgerà domani.